Okay, hello. In this presentation, there are two videos that indicate that the world is watching and afraid of the possible outcome of our 2024 election, and that there is a chance, however slight, that a fascist could become president of the United States. They, recon they recognize that he is not a stable person and carries chaos, chaos with him wherever he may go. He will say anything to get votes. He does come up with some catchy slogans, but he is a criminal, and I think anyone, regardless of political party, that wants to run for president should be deserving of the honor and at least be a good citizen, and a person that is a criminal does not qualify. The felon seems to really like dictators and appears to want to be like some of them. The first video talks about how the felon likes the leaders in China and Russia. In the second video, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, our country's highest military ranking officer, retires and talks about his former boss during his retirement. Please watch these videos. Hey everybody, it's Will Salatan from The Bulwark. Can I make a confession? I've been wondering lately whether Donald Trump really loves America. I know that sounds like a crazy thing to wonder about. I mean, look at his hat. It literally says, make America great again. And remember that time he came on stage and hugged an American flag? And this is, this is one prime example of him just hugging the flag and in an attempt just to get votes, just to lure people to vote for him. Like, I love America. It's, it's more than just hugging of hugging a piece of cloth by saying by by saying that you love America but being a good patriot being a patriot is about sacrifice not just hugging a piece of cloth he loves us doesn't he no but here's the thing lately trump has been saying some rather odd things about russia and china and north korea that make it sound like maybe he likes those countries more than he likes our country. In fact, he's been trashing the United States and suggesting that in some ways, we're the worst country in the world. Let me show you what I mean. Now, for a long time, Trump has been saying that America's allies are worse than our enemies. He just said it again this weekend at a rally in Wisconsin. Watch. We have been treated so badly, mostly by allies, if you want to know the truth. Our allies treat us actually worse than our so-called enemies. But we have been treated so badly on trade and other things, on military. We protect them, and then they screw us on trade. We're not going to let it happen anymore. Did you hear how he described our enemies? He didn't call them our enemies. He called them our so-called enemies. Our so-called enemies. What does he mean by that? Which so-called enemies does he like more than he likes our allies? Here's one clue. Watch this clip from an interview Trump did a month ago with a YouTuber named Aiden Ross. This is from a live stream. So you're going to see Trump and Ross in a small frame on the left side of the screen. In the middle of the screen, Ross is showing Trump a series of leaders of other countries, and he's asking Trump what he thinks of them. Watch what happens when the screen changes from Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, our neighbor and ally, to Kim Jong-un, the dictator of North Korea. But I got along with him well. Now this man, I really got along with well. I got to know him very well, and I got along with him great. He's very smart, he's very strong. He's the absolute leader. You know, a lot of people say, oh, maybe he's not the leader, he's the absolute. When he's around, his people are standing up at attention. I've never seen. Can you tell how excited Trump is? about all those people in North Korea standing at attention for Kim and the way Trump says the absolute leader. Trump seems to have a kink for a strong man. And Trump also likes Kim because Kim doesn't like the president and vice president of. See, now what I think he's suggesting is Trump wants to be a dictator. United States. Listen to Trump in the same interview talking about Kim's opinion of Kamala Harris, who Trump refers to as just her. 
But I got along with him great. We would have had no problem with him. Now he's getting very angry with us, and he's getting very angry with... Uh, I understand he doesn't like her. He doesn't know her, but he forms opinions, and he doesn't like her. And he thought that Biden was a stupid man, a very stupid man. He would say that, but I say the same thing, so at least we agree on something. <laughs> so let me get this straight. The dictator of North Korea doesn't like the elected leaders of the United States. And Donald Trump sides with their dictator against our elected leaders. It seems hard to believe since Trump claims to be pro-American. But a week after that interview, Trump said it again. Listen to this audio of Trump's interview with Elon Musk on August 12th. And I got along with all this. You know, I got along with Kim Jong-un. We had dinner. We had everything. And he, he really liked me. And I got along with him really well. By the way, he's, he's the absolute boss over there. You know, a lot of people said, oh, do you think he really? Yeah, let, that's let for sure. Let me tell you, I <laughs> saw things that you don't want to know about. He is the boss. But you know, we had a good relationship and, and he doesn't like uh, Biden. He considers him a, a stupid man, he said. He's a stupid man. Well, at least he speaks his mind. But, you know, in this country, you're not sort of allowed to say it, but I guess you are. You should be allowed to say it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, you heard that right. Donald Trump says he likes Kim because Kim is the absolute boss over there and because Kim doesn't like Biden. And Trump says that in this country, you're not allowed to speak your mind the way Kim does in North Korea. And Trump doesn't just have a fetish for Kim. He also seems to have the hots for Xi Jinping, the dictator of China. Watch this clip from a speech Trump gave last week to business leaders in New York. So I had a great relationship with President Xi of China, really very close relationship. Uh, now look, he likes China, I like us, so. But I don't want to sound foolish. He was my dear, dear friend. He's a tough guy. He's a fierce person. Too late. You're already sounding foolish. I say very smart. You know, when you say he's smart, the fake news goes crazy. He said, President, she is smart. And I say, yeah, well, he controls 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. He's smart. Trump really seems to be into this iron fist thing. Trump wants to rule with an iron fist, too just like she and Kim. Listen to this from... That is true, and we don't need that. We don't want or need that in America. Trump did a week and a half ago in Pennsylvania. The only thing they understand, I went to China, I saw President Xi, had a good relationship until COVID came in, then I broke it off. It was, that was too much. <laughs> but I said to him, and I had a great relationship with him, and I will again, probably. But I said, do you have a drug problem? 1.4 billion people. No, 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 we have no drug problem. Why don't you have a drug problem? Because we have the death penalty, he said. For okay, what are you suggesting, idiot? Are you suggesting that we kill everybody who sells or buys drugs? Now remember, the drugs that are coming into the country are coming into the country because they are filling a need that the American people are buying. American people are buying the drugs. So you can't blame it on the people that are exporting their drugs into America. What about the people in America that are importing those drugs and buying them? If they sell drugs, they die, he said. And then Trump told the crowd that the United States should do the same thing. And if you did that meaningfully, you will in... One week, stop the drug problem. Nobody's going to be selling drugs, nobody. What do you mean nobody's going to be selling drugs? What about all the Americans that are buying drugs? Americans love to get high. <laughs> that's just a that's just a cold that's just a cold honest truth. Americans want to get high. If you make drugs illegal, somebody's going to figure out a new way to like. Take some tobacco and soak it in gasoline and snort it and then get high off of it. <laughs> I don't know if the country's ready for it, but they should. But Trump doesn't just want to emulate these dictators. He also blames the United States for antagonizing them. He often blames Biden and Barack Obama for antagonizing Kim. 
And listen to what Trump said in that interview with Elon Musk about his favorite strongman, Vladimir Putin. Trump actually blamed Biden for provoking Putin to invade Ukraine. You know, Biden uh, did something with Russia. Uh, there was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left, and then, I, then after I left, they started forming big armies on, their, on the border with Ukraine, right? And I looked at that, and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that uh, it can be a NATO country. Now, Putin, Russia, for, for as long as there's been NATO, has said, we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And Trump didn't just blame Biden. He also blamed the previous Republican president, George W. Bush, for provoking both Russia and China. I mean, we forced Obama, if you think about it, Obama and Biden, and Bush to a certain extent, in all fairness, forced Russia and China together. So let's see. Putin, Xi, Kim. Are there any other authoritarian leaders Trump admires? Let's check out the interview Trump did last week with Sean Hannity on Fox News. That was the question they asked Viktor Orban, who's a, a really a very considered a very strong. They said he's a strong man. Sometimes you need a strong man. He's a strong man. He's the prime minister of Hungary. And he said, you bring back Trump, everybody. Now, I'm not saying it, but he said it because I'd rather say respect. But he said, everybody was afraid of Trump. You bring him back, you're not going to. They're not afraid of Trump. They're afraid of what Trump's going to. Trump's going to screw up the whole the whole country and eventually the planet. That's what they're concerned about. They're concerned about the saneness of the United States and the planet. They know that wherever Trump goes, eventually, once he infects the, the United States, then the, the infection's just going to spread throughout the planet. Any problems, it's all going to go away. The world is blowing up. The world is blowing up. It sounds like Trump likes these authoritarian leaders because they're strong and intimidating. That's why he goes around quoting Viktor Orban, because that's what Orban says about Trump, that we need Trump because Trump scares people. So there's a very clear bond between Trump and foreign dictators. But what does Trump think about our country? Here's what he said about the United States in a speech last week to the Fraternal Order of Police. We are a laughing stock all over the world. Yeah, we're a laughing stock all over the world, and part of that is because we have a loose cannon that might get into the White House again. You know, everyone's always talking about these terrible countries to live in that regime and this or that, but those countries don't have crime like we do, not even, not even close. Wait. Did Trump just use the word regimes? Does he think it's more dangerous to live in America than it is to live in these authoritarian countries? And which countries is he talking about? Let's see what Trump said at his rally in Wisconsin on Saturday. In fact, if they win, we're never going to lose touch with each other if they win. But we won't come here. It'll be too dangerous. We will have a meeting we will have a rally in Caracas, Venezuela, because it will be safe by comparison to Wisconsin. OK, so we'll all hop on a flight. We'll go over to Caracas, Venezuela, or one of hundreds of other countries that are safer than the U.S. Because our country is a very unsafe country now. Venezuela? Isn't Venezuela a left wing dictatorship? Venezuela is allied with Cuba and Russia and Trump claims that Harris is a communist, but it's Trump, not Harris, who seems to think that Venezuela is a better place to live than the United States. And it's not just about crime. Trump also claims that the American legal system is more corrupt than the legal system in Venezuela and in other South American countries. Oh yeah, he claims that, that the American legal system is corrupt because he has experience with it as a defendant. He's found, found guilty of all the different crimes that he's committed. 
and everybody's out of step to let him to let him tell a story. Everybody's corrupt except for him. Listen to what Trump said at a rally in Pennsylvania three weeks ago about the court cases in which he has been found guilty or liable for breaking the law. We're going into communism. When they weaponize our government like this, that's what they do in third world countries. That's what they... They're not weaponizing the legal system. They're taking someone who has broken our law and making them go to, go to trial for it. And you obviously do not respect the law of the country that you live in, idiot. In South American horror shows, that's what they do in banana republics. They've weaponized it. But our, I believe ours is even more corrupt. The New York court system is totally corrupt. So if Trump thinks that authoritarian countries are safer, less corrupt, and even more tolerant of free speech than America is, in what way <laughs> is he actually pro-American? He says he wants to protect American workers and keep jobs in this country instead of shipping them overseas. But listen to how he talks about companies that do ship jobs overseas. This is from an interview Trump did two weeks ago with Phil McGraw, the famous Dr. Phil. He's talking about corporate taxes. You know, these are great international companies. They don't have to be here. They can be in other countries. And if you're going to have to pay 54% here, uh, you're gone. You're going to move to another country. They have some very nice countries to live in. And they're very loyal to their shareholders. They almost have an obligation to do it. They have an obligation to do it? It sure sounds like Trump is saying that if these companies can get a better deal somewhere else, they should take it. But that can't be what he means, can it? And certainly Trump can't be talking about dictatorships like Russia or China or North Korea. Surely he recognizes that those countries are enemies of the United States and that we as Americans have to stand together for our country against those tyrants. But in fact, no, Trump says just the opposite. He says his domestic opponents, Americans, are more dangerous than those dictators are. Here's what Trump told Elon Musk about Kim Jong-un. But we were not in danger with him because of me. You know, I always yeah. say that we have enemies on the outside and we have enemies on the inside. We have some really bad people in our government and people that... Right, and you are one of them, Trump. You were one of them. And controlling of the people. I mean, I'd mention names, but I, I, don't, I really don't want to give them the credit. But we have some really bad, and I say they're more dangerous than Russia and China. And in case you can't quite believe what you just heard, here's Trump repeating that allegation later in the interview. You know, I was talking about the difference from the people within and the enemies on the outside. In many cases, the people from within are more dangerous for our country than the Russians and the Chinas. What all these clips show, unmistakably, is that Donald Trump doesn't love America. The people he loves are dictators. He admires them. He wants to emulate them. And when they invade other countries or get into quarrels with the United States, Trump takes their side, not ours. Trump looks at America the way an abusive husband or boyfriend looks at a woman. He loves her only to the extent that she worships and obeys him. He believes that without him, she's nothing. He'll insult her, he'll blame her, he'll threaten her, and he'll tell her that other women are better than she is. That is not love, and it's not patriotism either, but it is Donald Trump. Now on to the second video. The Secretary of the Army, the following general officer, is retired. General Mark A. Milley. Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley has officially retired after holding the military's top job for the last four years and spending more than four decades serving the country. 
Just last hour, General Milley passed the baton to his new replacement, General C.Q. Brown, during a special farewell ceremony at the Pentagon. Milley's retirement comes after a tumultuous tenure that spanned some of the most chaotic political moments of the Trump administration. During his speech, the general appeared to take a shot at the former president. Listen to this. We don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. We don't take an oath to an individual. That wannabe dictator he's referring to, he's referencing Trump. We take an oath to the Constitution, and we take an oath to the idea that it's America, and we're willing to die to protect it. General Milley helped steer the country through the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the high-stakes maneuvering around the war in Ukraine. President Biden honored the general, calling him a leader of great strength. And Brianna, we should note those comments from General Milley about a wannabe dictator come as his former boss is really criticizing him pretty openly. Yeah, no doubt. In fact, as General Milley retires, he may have the distinction of being the first chairman of the Joint Chiefs seen off with violent threats from a former commander-in-chief, Donald Trump, of course, here. Milley telling 60 Minutes this weekend that he's had to take security measures to protect his family. See, now, what kind of shit is this? Somebody who was president of the United States threatening a senior military officer with death? That's absolutely ridiculous. The man is crazy and is not mentally stable and should not be allowed within sniffing distance of the White House. As much as these comments are directed at me, it's also directed at the institution of the military. Um, and there's, there's 2.1 million of us in uniform. And, and the American people can take it to the bank that all of us, every single one of us, from private to general, will loyal to that Constitution and will never turn our back on it no matter what, no matter what the threats, uh, no matter what the humiliation, no matter what. Are you worried about your safety? I've got adequate safety precautions. I, I wish those comments had not been made, but they were, and we'll take appropriate measures to ensure my safety and the safety of my family. So here are the comments that Milley is referring to. It's a post from Trump saying that Milley's calls with his Chinese counterpart in the final days of his administration were an action so egregious that in the past they would have been punishable by death. According to multiple sources, mind you, these were calls where in part Milley sought to calm his counterpart in China by reassuring him that the U.S. was not considering an attack on China. Sources say there were 15 people on these video calls. And Trump is saying that Milley should have been killed for them, quote, in times gone by. Well, this is the violent rhetoric that Trump and also his allies have become known for. The most famous example, of course, being this one on January 6th, 2021. We fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Let's have trial by combat. We all know what happened after that. 114 police officers injured. One police officer died the day after the attack. Four have died by suicide in the aftermath. And four of Trump's supporters died, including one shot by Capitol Police while at the front of a mob of people climbing through the shattered window of a door just feet from where lawmakers were sheltering in place. Before January 6th, Trump's violent rhetoric was long criticized for what it might inspire, but after January 6th, it was no longer an exercise in hypotheticals. Kelly Meggs, a member of the far-right Oath Keepers group convicted of seditious conspiracy for his role in the attack on the Capitol, wrote two weeks before the insurrection, Trump said, it's going to be wild, it's going to be wild. He wants us to make it wild, that's what he's saying. He called us all to the Capitol and wants us to make it wild, sir, yes, sir. So we all know the stakes. Trump knows the stakes. They're sky high, and yet Trump is undeterred, repeatedly threatening those who he perceives to be his enemies. Like the prosecutors and the judges involved in the four indictments that he is now facing, there's Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis, who is trying Trump for alleged election interference in Georgia. She says that she and her staff have received violent and racist threats. Judge Tanya Chutkin, presiding over Trump's federal election interference case, she has security because she's received death threats. See, that's all because we have a loose wingnut running around trying to get into the back into the White House. My point is Trump is dangerous and not stable. That's why others around the world are afraid that he may be president again. And it's just going to cause more chaos 
inside the United States and eventually it will spread to other to other continents. The felon is a, the felon will lie, cheat, and steal to appear to be the winner of the election. It appears that the felon likes people that rule, quote unquote, with an iron fist, and even our country's high military officers see see this in him. If he loses, he will accuse others of doing what he has tried to do and has spent much of his and he has spent much of his adult life slithering along, bringing the law, and should not be allowed anywhere near the White House. Thank you for watching.